Hello? Okay, there we go, it's working, sorry. <laughs> uh, Windows and audio devices is always fun. Hello, everyone, we've got a few people here, which is awesome. We have Cybershark as well, even here before the stream started, which is crazy, so thank you all for, for stopping by, Aditya, and coding help. Hello. Uh, should you learn data structures and algorithms for Android? Uh, I would say yes, kind of. I would say you don't really need to know how to implement them yourself. Like, I don't know, like link lists and stacks and all of that. I would say you don't need to know how to implement it because you're never going to do that on Android. Right, there's always existing stuff you can use, but it does help to understand a bit how they work. The diff and what if a few of the different structures that exist, you know, array array list uh, stacks queues priority queues, because they can each be useful in their own situations. So, I think it's good to just know about them, in general. Luke is here. <laughs> What's up, man? Long time. Hope you're doing well. Hope you are keeping well on that side of the world, man. Hope all is good. Uh, okay, we're gonna have some music and hopefully... Oh, it's not gonna be too loud. Uh, yeah. Let's do this review thing. So this one is a bit different. It's not a normal weather app. Uh, I'm just trying to see, so... I was a bit late to the party, they sent it to us, or sent it on our Slack channel yesterday, but I didn't see it. <laughs> I, I missed it, so... Someone else did the review already, but I figured it might as well be cool to check it out. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and download the source. Then we can take a look. Ahem... <clears throat> Uh, what's the difference between collections and data structures? I don't really know. Kind of the same. I get, I d <laughs> I'm not really sure. Maybe all collections are data structures, but not all data structures are collections. I don't really know. <laughs> Maybe someone else can give a better explanation of that. But a, a collection, like it's it's an interface in, in Java or Kotlin where, you know, the various stuff implements it, like lists and maps and stuff. Does map, I don't actually know if map implements a collection. <laughs> you can take a look just now when I've actually opened the IDE. Uh -huh, where is this gone now? And it's Friday, so that's awesome. Uh, I need a weekend. It's been a tough week. Tiring. Windows is doing weird things to me now. But we should be alright. Cool, I've got the sound. Ah, the source, what am I saying? So I'm just going to open it quickly and make it anonymous as per usual. Removing any author names and things. Ah, uh, yes, otherwise it's all cool. Uh, oh, I missed some messages, sorry, stuff is freezing a bit. Luke, you're good? Yeah, good to hear, man. Hope the job is going well. Uh, yes, I don't even know what that means, Cybershock. Floyd Warshall. War Warshall? Algorithm, I've never heard of that in my life before. <laughs> is that bad? Oh, gosh. Sleepy Shack, what's up? What do recruiters look for? Uh, that you know how to code. <laughs> um, 
for, for me, I just want to see if you can fulfill the requirements mostly. Like if you can read and follow instructions. Um, and just general, how good is your code? How well architected is it? Do you follow modern practices with all the modern, you know, guidelines, that kind of thing? Um, and of course, depending on your experience level, it will be different. So I tend to be less strict if it's a, a junior instead of a senior. But yeah, it's just your... I just try to get a general feel for the code when I look through it and... And yeah, I'll give my thoughts on that. Uh, thoughts on learning Canvas. <laughs> Daniel is here as well. Hello. Shortest path. What's that other... Oh, the other one's on the tip of my tongue for that shortest path things. Um, Canvas. I do not know Canvas API at all. So I've been fine so far, but I work on a banking app, so I've not really needed it. Maybe someone else has actually needed Canvas API before. But we do not need such fancy things. Okay, let me just rename some packages. Oh, I'm forgetting all the hotkeys and the shortcuts on Windows. <laughs> mm. Yes, Dijkstra, or however you want to pronounce it, that's the one I was thinking of. <laughs> okay, so I didn't know, I mean it makes sense that there are other algorithms as well. We just, we learned about Dijkstra only at university. What? Associate Android developer needs it? Really? I did this. I've I did that certificate. I don't remember Canvas. Hmm. Surely though it will be some very basic level. Boy, come on, this is not working. Okay. I've not really used <laughs> the Canvas API. Just learn Compose instead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait, this guy... Oh, this name is familiar. I think I reviewed their weather app previously. Okay, I think, yeah, I've definitely reviewed this person's code before. Not this app, but, but yeah, the previous thing they submitted. Uh, sorry, my chat is like all the way over there, so I have to... Wait, are we still... Okay, sorry, the music just ended. I thought I disconnected. <laughs> so the chat is there, so I'm like looking so far right. Um, custom views, yes. Custom views are definitely worth knowing about. Yeah, no canvas. Okay, so you, you meant custom views. Yeah, custom views are definitely worth knowing about because it can be useful if you if you have some kind of view that you need to reuse. Instead of copying and pasting stuff all over the place. Just make a... A reusable one. Uh, oh boy. Replacing package names always leads to problems. Uh, 
Um, sorry, it's a bit of a slow process. That's my phone, it needs to go on silent. Coded strings of their name all over the place. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I think these are somewhat important. Mm. Okay, so I have a successful build. Let's just see if there's anything I've missed. Uh -huh. <laughs> you guys are gonna love this app. Maybe. Uses Lottie, Data Store, Glide, Timber, all the good stuff by the looks of it. Seems to be quite well done as well. I mean, I'm not looking at the code yet, but just glancing over. Just glancing over... Oh, shit. That might be a problem. They've left out the API key. <laughs> what API is this even? <laughs> okay, it's, oh, gosh, I'm gonna have to try to get a key myself and see if it works. Just gonna run it and see what happens, and then I can show you guys what's happening. Uh, why do we need to use Timber? Uh, it makes logging a bit simpler, because then you don't need to pass in a tag. Uh, it has a fancy way to look at the stack trace <laughs> and and get the, the class name that is calling the log function, and it will use that as the tag. I don't know, I'm sure there's more other advanced features, and that's what I like most about it. I hate having tags all over the place. Um. <laughs> oh boy, okay, what is... Hmm. Wait, the API key is not blank? Seems to be working. Sorry, it's almost there. What? I'm very confused. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, okay. Not all of them need an API key. <laughs> this app makes me very happy, though. <laughs> wow, even that Lottie animation. <laughs> this is amazing. This is my favorite app so far. Oof, okay, I think that made it crash because I didn't have the API key. Shit. 
I'll be able to show you now. Sorry, so I know it's a bit of a boring process just looking at a blank screen, but I need to do this sadly. Uh, presentation mode. Uh, <laughs> uh, also integration with third party remote logging platforms okay look that's way too advanced for me <laughs> is that i don't know if that's what's supposed to be bug finder or if it's supposed to be an r hey ccr Sadly, yeah, we don't have nice emotes here. I wish we did. You need a string as yes, message. It doesn't call to string like log does. Okay. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Indeed. So. Fine. Abhishek. Hello. So... Let's switch over. All right. So <laughs> the story with this uh, review is from what I understand, it's someone who's already employed at my company and they are looking to be contracted to someone else. Uh, that's what I, we do. We are contracting house so this code that i'm looking at now is what they want to submit to the target company so they want us to check it first and then they'll send it on and then the next company will check if they want to actually you know take on this person as a contractor i hope that kind of makes sense uh are you finding all the emotes yeah there are some cool ones i like this one uh wait where is it my chat gets laggy when I look at emotes for some reason. The one with a cat in the box. It's pretty cute. And that's pretty accurate because... Hmm, buffering. I don't know if you guys see buffering as well or it's only my end. Um, yeah, you can kind of think of it as a peer review. I don't know this person though, per... Uh, like personally as a friend but yeah there's someone who works at the company so sorry rambling too much uh oh wait that minimized so the app is is one that shows off cats <laughs> uh like it's amazing how is this not like award worthy so when you open it up it shows that nice little, presumably, Lottie animation. And then you get a random cat. <laughs> it's amazing. And then you can refresh it and it fetches a new one. Or maybe not. Or it fetches the same one? Why is that there? I swear it was fetching different ones earlier. <laughs> okay, there you go. Maybe it's cached for a specific amount of time. But yeah, so that's what the app does, and there are a few different sections, like you can view a lot of the various breeds. There seems to be a lot of them. <laughs> Share this with the joke cat. <laughs> I wish I could, but it's like an internal thing. That is you, what is that emote? The YouTube, I don't know, fixer upper guy. Uh, it paused for a second. All right, sorry, I don't know what is up. I don't see dropped frames, so hopefully it's still all right. But you can see all the breeds. Um, whoa, version is just like a no-go zone here. Nice. Oh, you can even click on them. Wow. He's outgoing enough to walk on the leash, energetic enough to play fetch. Huh. 
and other interactive games and confident enough to get along with other cats and friendly dog. Like, does this cat not know it's a cat? Cats aren't supposed to walk on leashes and play fetch. <laughs> They're supposed to, like, do their own thing and then get angry when you don't feed them. Turkish van? Oh, I can't view the picture properly. But yeah, so this is the app. And there's also a categories section. Phone is going crazy. Uh, it's too daft to understand. Wow. They mold. <laughs> True. Uh, so you can presumably. Wait, what did I click on? Oh, boxes. So you can then see pictures that match that category. I mean, boxes are pretty much their home. They are like attracted to it like magnets. You always get the same ones though if you go back. Okay, um So that's pretty much the app. I mean it's fairly simple, but I'm sure there's a lot going on. Space. Okay, not for that one apparently. Sinks. Sunglasses. <laughs> this guy ain't got no problems. Cats who yell. <laughs> I didn't know about that. That subreddit. Uh, wait, what this one was? Ties. <laughs> that I... I never understand people who dress up animals. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me, man. Surely they can't be comfortable. Like, what is this? <laughs> oh my gosh. This one just looks like he's so done with your crap. Just sitting there in his in his tie being like, come on, bro. Looks like a well-built app. Yeah, it does. It does. So the last section was... Oh, sorry. You said you... It did tell you the backstack animation. That does, eh? I don't know if it shows there. It doesn't. Yeah, so it switches between a back button and like a menu icon so unfortunately the favorites thing is what does not work because the api key is required there and it's not included in the source wow this is me irl uh so i won't be able to check the favorites part and i think there was also a favorite button over here somewhere was it inside uh, where was it yeah, here. No, so it'll crash there when you try to add a favorite as well. I mean, it shouldn't crash <laughs> if you're missing something, if a service fails. Uh... Yeah, you see, the service fails with unauthorized and then the app crashes, which should not be a thing. <laughs> you should handle problems like that. Of course, we have our example tests. And in the, in the README I saw, it says that the tests are a work in progress, <laughs> meaning they don't exist yet, but they thought it sh should exist. <laughs> Humans are animals. This looks more professional. <laughs> yeah, okay, so... Yeah, we have Hilt as well. That's nice. And Timber. This you should probably only do if it's debug mode. Something like... Debug. I think that's how you're supposed to do it. And why does the music stop? Please, YouTube. Because uh, you pr pretty much don't want logging on the release builds. Uh, retrofit drops an exception. It does. 
So let's see the retrofit servers. So you see what you can do with retrofit, you can use the return type as just the deserialized object. So where is it? a simple cat response? Right, okay, so that's just a list of whatever, but if you do it like this, it will crash if you don't have a, a catch around this method. But what you can also do is you can wrap it in a response object, like so. Then it won't throw an exception anymore, but this thing will actually have an error. So then you say, if this is successful, then you can get the data. Otherwise, handle the error. So there's sort of two different ways you can go about it. Either have a manual try catch each time you call this, or wrap it in a response object. Uh, what do you think of Compose? Compose is definitely worth learning. Especially now it's stable and they've improved a, a lot <laughs> since they first went uh, public. It's definitely worth it. I was kind of in two minds myself because at work, you know, we won't really be able to use it for a while, but once I've started, it's actually a lot of fun. <laughs> it becomes fun to write UI again. Not having to create six XML files and find view by ID the whole time, so it's definitely worth taking a look. Even if you're not going to use it at work or migrate all your projects, it's fun to just play around and see how it works. The new way of of thinking about state and recomposing takes a bit of getting used to. <laughs> like when, like how do I make the UI update if I change some data? Right, that that can be a bit tricky, but it's a lot of fun once you've got it right. Um, you've only used response. Yeah. Yeah. So call is is a similar, I think. But that's when you would not make have it as a suspend. And you would say dot execute, yeah. Say gun, coroutine. Yeah, yeah, so you can also have a exception handler in coroutines in this case. Think of building a small game and compose. Yeah, you should. I've been playing around with Compose for desktop as well, it's very nice. Very, very nice. I've seen some crazy stuff on Twitter, <laughs> what people have been doing in Compose for desktop. And I feel bad because I'm just there creating like one window and stuff. Um, okay, sorry, I need to actually look at this. So let's t start from the service layer. We already saw the retrofit service, I don't think there's much really going on here. It's just standard stuff. As we mentioned though, you would probably want to handle exceptions that come from here. So right now, if the service fails, it will crash. Because I guess there's no like... Oh, we should try catch anywhere. Uh, but anyway, I mean, it looks pretty good otherwise. Suspend is good. Using coroutines. Why are we passing mime type? Uh, as parameters, I see. Oh, because I saw... Sorry, I forgot to show you the... The settings. I love that. Whoa. Possessed cat. The settings allow you to choose the image type for some reason. A GIF. I'm not sure why this would be here. Unless I missed like, a, a download option, but I don't think so. If you're just viewing them in the app, it doesn't really matter <laughs> what format they are in. Oh, nice! Okay, that you can do GIFs. That's awesome. And very creepy, but... But nice. <laughs> does it also work for these ones? Oh, it does! Holy cow, that's impressive, man. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, remember Windows date. Yeah, it took me a long time to get used to that. It's like opening Windows is is also part of the composition. So then you have to keep like a a boolean or something. Is this window open? At first, I was not really enjoying that, but uh, I mean, then you get to use the power of compose with it, so it's good at the end of the day. Downloading the image. Yeah, I'm not sure we'll see it see it soon. But it's nice that you can view GIFs. I just don't know, like... PNG versus JPEG, does that really make sense? But, I mean, uh, not the end of the world. So that's why they, the MIME type is passed in. So, service... Is used in the repo. So let's take a look at repo. We have a repo interface. No flow or anything like that. What does my phone only go off when I stream? So I mean, this repo class is probably pretty simple. Yeah, it's just. Hmm. Just delegate straight to the service. Interesting. Okay. Coil as GIF support. Nice. Everything in Compose these days. <laughs> okay, repo, network is done. Models won't be very exciting, I think. I mean, they're always so boring. Type alias. Interesting. Or maybe call this cat breeds or something, because it's a list of them. But, meh. Holy cow, there's a lot of properties. <laughs> Wait, even. No, there's, there's no error handling. Uh, I like that these, these ratings here... <laughs> for all these different properties like how what is their affection level dog friendliness <laughs> that's pretty cool man this API is awesome uh, use the wrong wait you use the right one here yeah Let's close all the tabs. So, what they moved this parcelized annotation into the main like Kotlin library or something. That's not part of Android one anymore. Well, I guess that's not the package name. They moved it into Kotlin X parcelized instead of Android. Uh, no switching. Oh yes. I don't think you need to, actually. The service will do that. Because they are suspend functions which retrofit supports, so... I'm sure these will actually switch to a background context. Retrofit will do that. And since there is not really extra work happening in the repo, you don't need to switch in here. But definitely, if you were like writing to a to a room or something, you would switch here, or if you were mapping the data. Okay, model is not really that exciting. Please, hopefully this music isn't too loud. Seems very energetic at times. Uh, 
Uh, Rexfield. Rex. <laughs> I guess I'll have to look at the the API the docs for that. I have no idea. Not using the project either. So helpers, I always love a good helper package. Oh. Okay. DI, the module class. Yeah, this is good. Okay, yeah. Mm. Ah, yes, they're using data store as well, which I'm keen to see. Um. Yeah, so this is the API if anyone's interested. The cat API dot com. And it seems great because a lot of those services, as you saw, don't need. You need an API key, which is crazy because most of the time you need to at least sign up so they can rate limit you. <laughs> the level at which the cat yells, proportional to a T-Rex. I'm sure, yeah, some of them would get pretty high up on that list, on that rating. So also these are singletons, which I like because. You don't really need multiple instances. I think, yeah, the, the repo as well, it doesn't store any state, so that's fine. The reference manager also doesn't have... Oh, it does. But I guess you don't need multiple instances of it. Because, I mean, it's a, like a shared preference, so there's... Only one, one of it that you need to read. Anywho. These comments are a bit not necessary, but I'll allow it. Uh, okay, helpers, models, network, repo, uh, util. Yeah, Luke, yeah, I remember if you... You can also make them suspend the, the DAO methods in room and then it will switch for you, so that's true. So, I guess only if you do other heavy lifting in your repo, you need to switch switch to a background. Uh, okay, so this is data binding adapters, which is pretty... What is this? Mm, that's part of Collide. Okay, so the transition <laughs> to crossfade makes sense. And then we're just loading into the image view it makes sense placeholder <laughs> it's adorable vectors are also pretty useful cool hey <laughs> CCR is bringing in the backup. Devil, what's up, man? I'm sure this is most likely all gibberish to you, as it as it is to me. Uh, set image source from URL with loader. Oh, it's a Lottie thing. Okay, you'll have to forgive me. I've not used Lottie at all, so I do not know the API. So if anyone sees dodgy stuff with Lottie, please feel free to point it out, because I will not will not know what's going on. So it's loading a URL still into an image view with Glide. And then it adds a listener. Oh, okay. Oh, so I see it's like a a callback to essentially hide that Lottie animation. Now let's see it again for the cat playing. <laughs> so that's what happens then when the 
when the service call comes back, this code is being hit to stop the animation essentially. Nice wrapper to use it as a placeholder. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, binding adapters can make life a lot easier. I can't do that really. Because you can just do... Right, in your layout file, you just use this custom data binding property. Mm. Sorry. Need to drink some water, but... Yeah, so you use this custom attribute that you set there. Pass in the URL from the view model, and then it will just go and load it for you. Just by executing this code. So data binding is pretty powerful. I know it gets a lot of hate. But in the right cases, it makes life a lot easier. I yeah, it's, uh, obviously have to be very wary about putting logic and if statements and stuff in here. I mean, this is pretty much for me the ideal kind of usage. <laughs> Get random kitties. <laughs> and yeah, setting on click listener as well. That's very nice. Straight to the, the view model. And then you don't need the the, uh, the activity or the fragment to know too much. Oh boy, okay. Um, yeah, so binding adapter is pretty nice. I'm um, just going to have a quick bathroom break for one minute and then we'll carry on and have a look at this preference manager and then the view layer. Uh, so BRB. Variety. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. So, also, I've not used Data Store yet, so I'm keen to see what it looks like. Um, I do remember reading that you have like a singleton instance of it, which makes sense. Because it is kind of like a a file at the end of the day, I think, right? And you only want to be reading and writing to it at once, at one time. So you have a preferences data store. Jeez, there's a lot of stuff going on. Corruption handler even. And of course, Data Store is built on coroutines, which is awesome. And it, it has support for flow, 
so you can get a flow of all the values that are being set in the data store and easily easily react to the changes uh, I'm just why is it am I blind what Why does it need a context as a receiver? What am I missing? Oh, it's a property. Property delegation, right? So if I say get value, I can hopefully... No, what? Oh, right, it's the thing that this returns. Yeah, this thing. Get value. Okay, there you go. Finally, oh, that was a bit mind melting. Uh, shared preferences are also cached in the singleton. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, yeah, I <laughs> I don't know the behind the scenes, but it makes sense because as we said, it's a file, so you need to synchronize that. Anywho, preferences, so we have keys, string, preferences, key. Interesting, so you can have different key types. Hmm. Or not. Wait, how does this work? Oh, wait, is it the value? So if I go T. Sorry, I'm just trying to explore this for myself as well. Okay, yeah, so it's the data type. Sorry, it's not the key type. That makes sense. So I, I said it's a boolean preferences key, and then you can see over here, when we use that key, it it automatically infers the type as a boolean, whereas the other one was a string. That makes sense. That's pretty cool. Nice way of doing it. Instead of having get string, get boolean, get int, get long, get double everywhere. <laughs> So we have an image type flow, which was the... Oh, it's so cute. The setting over here. Right, where you can choose JPEG, PNG, GIF. Um, so we get a flow. I'm guessing this is the current value. Uh, if it's... I'm wondering why would you need to handle this exception? Seems like a very, very edge case scenario. Where it can't read the file or something? I don't know why you would need to handle that. I mean, it's not like you're gonna go and say create over here somewhere, it's just. Seems a bit unnecessary. Anywho, so if there's no exception, we'll map the data. Wait, what is happening? So context, we're referencing this data store. And data is just a flow. Oh, okay. So it's a flow of all the data <laughs> ever. Everything. And then, of course, you map it to only get the get the data of the key that you're looking for and then if it's null you'll just use a default shared references can also have IO exceptions yeah but since it's unchecked I mean who really cares about that 
And now that Kotlin doesn't have checked exceptions, who has to care about exceptions at all, right? I mean, we saw it here in the service layer. <laughs> so then I guess it does make sense to to handle it, you know, in the empty preference. What's that? Oh. So then it's going to emit this. Huh? Okay, so if it if it's an IO exception, we'll use def empty preferences. So then when we get here, it'll be empty and it'll just use the default. I wonder if you could make this into like a method so to reduce the duplication here. But anyway, I mean, at, at the end of the day, it is good to be safer like this. Because <laughs> you don't want stuff randomly crashing on the users. I don't even know if you encounter an IO exception on preferences, what would you do? <laughs> would restarting the device work or reinstalling your app? Yes, that sounds way too too complicated. Okay, so then we have a function to update it. So we just call edit and that's of course going to be a suspend. Nice. And then you just set the set the value like it was a map. Hmm. Very nice. Man, this looks like a really big improvement on shared preferences. <laughs> and then of course it's a flow, so when you set new value, it will update these two flows. And that's used in the view model. Hmm, okay. I need to start using data store myself. So we have just two oh boy. Just two packages left, but they have a lot of stuff inside. <laughs> the map. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you can map anything that you need to. Uh, uh, damn, we lost people when I went to have a bathroom break. Sad. But it is what it is. Drops IO. Okay, okay. And the storage is full. That makes sense. Maybe not as much these days. All the phones, you know, with what? 256 gig storage. I think that's what I have, actually. Uh, how do I find it? Storage. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see this. I've somehow managed to use almost 63 gigs of 256. Like phones these days, man, you're not gonna run out of storage as easily, but I guess if you get a lower end one, it can happen. But that does make sense in that very rare case, you will not be able to update the preference file. Kitty activity. Kitty activity running. <laughs> oh, okay, so you... Oh, but 3 gigs free is still a lot, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, in the activity, we have an app bar config. Why do we need that as a field? Uh, okay, for nav component things. We have a binding. I love late in it so much. Hi. Anywho, I always recommend to not use late in it where possible. I mean, here it's kind of fine because you'd rather use a nullable. What just happened? Brulee? Wow, actually got a new sub while streaming. I mean, I think they're probably watching another video, but on the off chance you're here, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, a lot of Android talks downloaded, oh, okay. I mean, that makes sense. That makes sense. 
don't know what takes up so much space. I gotta have, guess I have a lot of pictures and some apps, uh, songs maybe from Spotify. Uh, yeah, inflating data binding, action bar, draw layouts. I mean, all this is pretty good. And these nice little util functions to set up everything with the nav controller is super sweet as well. Hmm. Naughty naughty. Using find by view by ID when you have a binding object. I guess here you still need to get head of view and then I guess that those two make sense, I guess. Yeah. Meh. Video straight from the camera. Yeah, that's also true. I do have some videos from holidays and things. <laughs> Horrendously large. Uh, okay, the view model, we observe the username, nice, and that is what gets displayed here. Wait, I can actually change the name. Hmm, okay. So you, by changing the preference, it's going to update the flow, and then there you go. Gonna reflect on the UI immediately without any extra work, just observing the live data. Need to call separate bind stuff. Oh, okay. I guess sometimes it is necessary, sadly. Options menu stuffs should return true here. Um, you return true, return false to allow normal menu processing or true to consume it. So returning true is saying, yes, I've handled that, that click. So you don't need to worry about it. Otherwise it just goes to super and does whatever. Not the end of the world though. Not end of the world. Before I get to the fragments, I'll have a look at settings. Hey, John Mayer. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> I'm just, I think I'm too lazy, so <laughs> don't, I don't make videos regularly enough, which is kind of sad. You know, after work, I tend to just get tired and chill a bit, but I do want to make more. Um, I okay, guess so the settings activity loads a fragment, which will be a preference fragment. Ooh. Why not using Hilt for this view model? That's interesting. I wonder if there's a reason for that. Anywho, so we inflate the preferences. Um, this is, I do actually like how, you know, they make it fairly easy to have fancy preference screens. So it is XML, which is not that fun at the end of the day, but you don't have to worry about laying out all of these items and styling and on clicks and stuff. So I think it works pretty well. Well, I guess you do have to handle on change listener, right? Obviously when they change the preference, you go and save it in the view model. Although I wonder, is there no integration between between these preferences and data store? Surely there's something, because that would make a lot of sense to me. Where you can somehow bind a data store key with a preference value here. Although I guess these are 
to, already linked to shared preferences. I was wondering, I'm just wondering if there is a layer on top of that actually. So then you don't have to go and add all these listeners for each preference you have, it tends to get a bit boilerplate -y. Uh. Oh, okay. Oh, I see, I see, I see. No, but... <laughs> the view model is not used in the activity, it's only used in the fragment. I want to. I want to actually try it. Uh, I wonder if there's some weird preference fragment issue with this. I love seeing this when you can remove the null safety thing. So good. That's a hilt view model, so we cool. So let's rerun. If Hello? Yes. Hopefully you can hear me. Oh, not the stream, okay. <laughs> Jabated. Uh, there's no data store integration. Migration from shared preferences, okay. Oh, da data store preference. Yes, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah, so you see this, the screen doesn't crash with my new change. When I update the shared preference value, it does work. Okay, so maybe I just an oversight. They forgot to to update this this fragment here. Yeah, it would be very nice to get rid of... What? You say it's not needed, but then you leave it in? It would be nice to get rid of this boilerplate if they had a... a data store implementation of this, but anyway. Anyway, pretty nice, pretty nice. So... At least there's a lot of stuff to look at. Give you source settings. So the home fragment. Comment dot code. But it's it's nice because you can see how little logic they actually have in the view layer, and sadly I don't see that enough. <laughs> so I guess Oh you're so cute. I miss my cats, man. Uh, for the home fragment, I would guess is this one. The random cats fragment. Uh, setting up the binding, that's pretty much standard. Okay, the view model actually has a fair amount of stuff going on. But it's better than the view. Okay, so here is the, the preference for the, the username and the image type. These, these should also be vals, by the way. Uh, it, oh, you wanted to have a search function, but... I guess it didn't make the cut. Alright, there's no search button anyway. <laughs> Favorites. Wait, what? You update the loading thing, but you don't actually use it? Mm, strange. <laughs> <Get> <laughs> collect 
Gray has a man. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Man, I at work we still have so much old Java code and I get sad when I have to look at it. Adding listeners for everything, man. Ugh. That's so 2018. <laughs> Cats event channel. This sounds like a Discord thing. A channel. So a channel is like for communicating, right? You have sender and receiver. And then you convert it into flow. That is used in the oh, huh? oh no, the view model is reused. Never mind. Interesting. Seventy five percent Java. Well, congrats on. Joining the new place, though, that's awesome news. Great, great job. I know uh, finding work these days can be hard. I think we can be grateful that we actually have jobs, even though it's not fun all the time. But but at least it's a, it's a challenge, right? You get to move a lot of code to Kotlin. <laughs> if they don't frown upon that, hopefully. MVI, Ay, I don't know man, MVI for me, it's... I'm an MVVM kind of guy. Anywho, so when we get a new image type, we will just refetch the cats. <laughs> and we'll update the username, that's fine. Mm, I want to see something, but that's fine. Gets a random cat. <laughs> I love these names, man. Get random kitties. Uh -huh. This could be dangerous. Yeah, because if the list is empty here by some chance, it's going to explode. So got to be careful of that. Rather surround it in, an, uh, if not empty or something. It's an internship. That's a little cool, right? It's a nice chance to get going. How old are you, if you don't mind answering that question? Else feel free to not answer it. I already moved two classes. Nice. Interop is tough. Hmm. I guess we... Yeah, all our Java code is old, so we don't really have Java 8 features in it. Oh, 20. Wow. Proper zoomer. I'm almost 28. Peace. Next month, I'm 28. <laughs> Ah, uh, boy. Get random cats. So I don't know about having one view model that's used between three screens. It's also not shared, so it's a new instance each time. I mean, I don't know how much of this logic is actually reused between them. But things like, you know, to get the random cat is only used on the one screen. Get the breeds is used on the one screen. So I would maybe rather have separate ones here. I did here. <laughs> What's wow? My age or Cybershock age? <laughs> You're old already. 
No, I don't worry, it gets worse. I can't believe I'm almost working seven years already. 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, at the end of this year, it's been seven years. Eesh. Time flies when you're writing Java. <laughs> I thought channels... Weren't channels experimental or am I thinking of something else? I'm sure there was some coroutines thing that I'm thinking of. <laughs> Very worse. <laughs> oh no. 29. How does it feel to almost be 30? Scary thought, right? I'm only two years from that. Oof. There's MVI. I don't know. I mean, it's called view model. I think it's MVVM-ish. Um, get images by categories. I mean, there's nothing. You see, again, <laughs> having one view model for three screens is... Because the favorite is only used by one fragment, so like, why is it in a shared view model? Hmm. I know everyone who does Kotlin loves writing the sealed keyword whenever possible. Very scary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> scary. <laughs> I know I was thinking of it myself the other day. Wow. An event flow, I guess. To be honest, I've not written MVVI. M <laughs> I've not written MVI myself, so I guess I can't really tell tell when it is and when it isn't. <laughs> okay, but that screen was this one. I'm really sad that... Oh, look at those pores. That they don't have that loading animation when you refresh here. Like this. I'm guessing they kind of missed out on that, unfortunately. Yuba, hello, hello, hello. We're looking at a uh, an app that shows off random cats. <laughs> They're reviewing a colleague's code, basically, and it's pretty cool. You can view a list of breeds and read up on them, and you can have some categories to view a few pictures in that category. <laughs> what is that wizard hat, man? <laughs> <laughs> As I say, I don't get people who dress up cats like this in the middle, like why? But some of them can lead to pretty funny videos. <laughs> this one is so done. <laughs> the Christmas cat is so done with your crap. <laughs> oh, let me go, I want to eat my food already. <laughs> oh no, okay. Uh don't really get MVI, yeah. Me neither. Uh, the pause demand boop. <laughs> I shouldn't have cleared that image. Shit. Uh, so let's look at the... Which was the next one? The breeds. Uh... -oh. Wait, why do we have two fragments? Oh right, the detail. Read fragment. Uh, 
Uh, okay, I'll, I'll talk about that just now. Um, I mean, pretty standard. Data binding, recycle view adapter. Uh -huh. Observing the list and it. People don't know about list adapter. Wait, he's even using lift list, <coughs> lift adapter. He's using list adapter. Bruh. Please don't ever use notify dataset changed anymore. Because it invalidates the whole list. Which goes against list adapter. I'll go to that soon though. Uh, so we're launching a coroutine, collecting... Oh, so it's using a channel. That's interesting. I need to actually play around with channel to send events. And then if it's a navigation event, we will use nav component. Okay, that's interesting. I always feel bad trying to send one-shot events from view model to view. <laughs> and trying to use live data and like hack it together single live event similar situations and it just feels bad it doesn't feel good doing that <laughs> okay so the adapter now preparing my rage so by the way if you don't know list adapter you should really have a look at it it's part of recycler view library and it essentially makes your updates to lists very efficient so I mean, I mean here it's not really that impactful because the list is updated once right and that's all it's it's a very static list but if you have ones where you are adding and removing items and maybe changing some of them list adapter will help you a lot because we have this thing that you have to implement, which is a diff callback. And you basically tell the library how to compare your two models. Like when are they the same, when are they different, so that it knows when two items in the list have changed. So then it can only invalidate items that have changed instead of the whole list being invalidated. So it's very efficient. And you also get nice free animations. If you add a, a new item to the list, it will like insert it in very nice. If you remove it, sort of the above ones will slide down or whatever. So definitely look at list adapter and please don't ever call notified dataset change. It even highlights it for you. So that is not necessary. You call this uh, submit list function that's pre-built, right? This is part of the library. You give it your new list, or oh, where did we go? You give it your new list, and then it uses that diff callback thing to figure out what has changed in the new list. Very efficient updates. Calculates stuff on the background thread as well, I believe. Uh, Alright, sorry, going on a bit much. Yes, item animations. You get them literally for free. Uh, I'm sure you can do more advanced animations if you want to, but this adapter, there is no animation code and it will automatically animate for you, which is nice. Also, what I wanted to mention here, whoa, this should not be in inner class. Um, when you have Kotlin, please don't have on click listeners anymore. Just make it a lambda. What was the type? Cat breed. Right. It's a lot more readable. Just make it a lambda. Takes in a cat breed. 
And then when you create this thing, you don't need to implement listeners anymore. You can just actually, you know, have a, a lambda there. So much more readable in my opinion. <clears throat> Show him he really wants his food. Uh, breeds. Yeah. Uh, can use adapter position and current list. You can. Oh, I need to find another way to play music, man. It just randomly stops. Wait, what do you mean? You can use the adaptive position. You didn't mean in here, did you? Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. The view holder, I think, should always be static or non inner. Yeah, okay, so you can use that. I don't know. Personally, I don't put bodies really in the view holder class. I store a reference to the binding, and then in the bind view holder function, I tend to say, you know, holder dot binding dot. Uh, wait. What's even happening? Okay, just updating the values, like whatever. That's what I typically do, and you know, put whatever other other functions you need to do there. Otherwise, you end up with the need to have this thing as an inner class. Inner is static. Yeah, but for me, a view holder holds the view, and that's all. So you update the view from on bind view holder. Like, for, in my opinion, the view holder would just look like that. Right, in this case, it uses data binding, so it just holds on to the binding object. Or if you were using find view by ID, you would have like a. Wait, what? I deleted too much. Yeah, okay, it should extend, obviously, still view holder. But I guess that's where opinions kind of come into play. And then using glide to load the pictures. Yeah, you can pass in stuff in the constructor if necessary. Whoa, this is like Dashund version of a cat. Bambino. It's cross between the Sphinx and the Munchkin breed. <laughs> of course there's a Munchkin breed. This is literally cat version of Dashund. Cat from Mummy? Is that a movie? <laughs> uh, why glide? 
What what do you mean? Are you suggesting an alternate library? Or you just want to know in general? Because yeah, they're fetching all of these items from a service. And then using Glide to load in the URL the pictures. Does Persian still not have a picture? Oh, that's a shame. Can my phone stop going crazy? Chill. Not seen mummy. Okay. Let me look this up. Making me feel bad now. Nineteen ninety nine film or twenty seventeen with Tom Cruise. Or nineteen thirty two, Jeepers. Or nineteen fifty nine. There's a lot of them. Which year? <laughs> The 99 one has a 7 rating. <laughs> Sounds like I need a movie night. These code reviews take so much longer. Hard-coded strings. Okay, so this fragment now is when you click on one of them. You get like a details page. And... Yeah. Uh, binding stuff, setting title to the breed name, using Glide to load the image again. Man, how do you not use data binding here for this, man? Or is it only using... Oh, I see, it's view binding. Surely this... Gosh. Okay, yeah, he does use view binding in a few places, but otherwise it's... He uses data binding in a few places, otherwise it's view binding most of the time. Yes. My Friday brain is switching off. Yeah, yeah the, the remakes often, often disappoint, okay. The 99 one. No, I mean, it's one of the classics, as you say, so it's definitely worth it. Um, yeah, I shouldn't have hard-coded strings, but I mean, otherwise it looks good. So the last one I'm going to look at, categories. Uh, Pretty standard, it's very similar to the previous fragment. Notify data set changed, man. Categories fragments, get it? I guess the adapter will also be pretty similar, except there's no image here. It's just like some card view stuff. Uh, Yuba, this is a code review I'm doing from someone else, so I don't know. <laughs> I guess they... They're sending this to another company to see if they can contract there, and maybe that other company, I guess, doesn't really have Compose yet. So this... Uh, I didn't write this code. Uh... Again with the click listener. Uh, images adapt. Damn, all these adapter classes are very, very similar. Okay, and this fragment is what happens when you click on a category. <laughs> I 
For creatures that hate water so much, they tend to sleep in the sink too often. Uh, I mean, it's pretty similar, honestly. It's just recycler view stuff going on. Uh, notify data set again. Okay, and when you click on favorite, it will actually... Yeah, show you a snack bar. And going to this giga view model, which has all of the... All functions for three different fragments. Oh. So, and that looks good. Favorites. So favorites I can't get to because uh, it, it crashes because the API key is missing. Which I guess they intentionally did. So I can't see what the favorites looks like, but Okay, no, that's the view model. I was confused. I'll look at the code briefly and then we can finish up. <clears throat> so again, it uses the Giga view model. Uh, binding stuff, adapter. Then it observes on the favorites. If it's empty, it will show you a stack bar, apparently. Otherwise, it will just submit oh my gosh, submit the list to the recycler view. Uh, and then the adapter. Similar, similar, loading images. I also, ugh. man, I'm getting allergic to this uh, apply method, man. To me, here, there's zero point to use it. It just adds like unnecessary nesting. Just right here, binding dot, binding dot. It's okay. You can write variable names. And wait, nothing else shows up on the... Wait, it literally just shows an image. Hmm, I kind of wish I could see this favorite screen, but... Meh. Yeah, it has a lot of internal properties. Created at image ID. Oh, okay. That, well, that makes sense because. Sorry. Let's just have a look. So, favoriting. He looks like he's really seen some shit. Favoriting works. Not there. Here, yeah, okay. I don't know why I was thinking of favoriting a breed, which obviously has a name. So I was confused why there is no name showing up on the favorite list, but you're just favoriting these pictures. And that's all they are. So of course the favorite list will just show you the picture. <laughs> But if I do it now, it crashes because, again, the API key is missing. So, that's pretty much all, actually. Pretty well done. Architected well. I don't think it's over-architected either. I mean, it's done pretty well. I would maybe have some kind of caching, but not really because the app is supposed to get you uh, new pictures all the time. So... I don't think caching would really be that useful here. Maybe caching your favorites would make the most sense. But in general... Oh, and the, the breed list as well. I would cache that. Because it seems like there's quite a few items there. 
So you could save some bandwidth by caching that and your favorites. But otherwise it's pretty well done. I would maybe have split out the view model as I mentioned. Because this one was used by how many places? Uh, let's see. So it was used... What is this grouping, man? Okay, whatever. So it's used by... Oh, <laughs> it's used by six different classes. One view model. I mean, I guess it can work. If you're sharing data between them, sure, but... In this case, there is no sharing of data. It's just uh, by view models each time. So it's not scoped to uh, the activity view model. So yeah, I would definitely maybe suggest splitting this up because a lot of these functions are only used by one fragment. So you have this giga view model and it's kind of a bit bloated, I would say. I mean, but it's not the end of the world. It's still well done in general. Just the... The uh, recycle view adapter <laughs> should not be calling notify dataset changed ever when you use list adapter. And I saw a few hard coded strings, which is also not too great. Uh, the bind function was passed in as a lambda to the adapter with generics for the model and binding object. Yes. The bind function was passed in as a lambda to the adapter. I guess you want to make a like a reusable adapter. They are actually all pretty similar. So you want to essentially extract this to the fragment level. I mean, it can work, maybe? You would also have to ex pass in the diff callback. Because that is specific to your model. I mean, then you also have to tell it to inflate the specific binding. It's a static method, so you don't have, like, uh, inheritance and stuff there. But yeah, it, could, it can work, I suppose. I've never tried something like that. But I... In general, I'm trying to be very wary of inheritance all over the place and generics it just a lot of the time makes it quite complicated so for simple cases sure but then it gets a bit dodge if you need to add on to that time after time and you, you then end up i don't know making it a bit harder to understand i've seen it trust me like oh i'll just create this uh, simple base base class for our activities which which, you know, shows the, the up button. And then, oh, let me add this to the activity, actually. But, oh, wait, it only needs to be used in some some activities. So then you have, like, a Boolean or something. It can end up being not so great. I mean, just use Compose, right? No more adapters and stuff. Uh, maybe the models can also have an interface. Yeah, you see, that's, for me, it's kind of getting now to the, the over-engineering side of things. <laughs> um.
Adam. Hello, Adam. Greetings. Heinz. What's up, man? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> this is a very strange place to see you, but thank you for stopping by. Need to stop streaming selfishly. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. It's fun. It's fun doing these reviews and having people around. Uh, we must play Dota again sometime, man. I don't play much anymore because there's no friends. No friends around and I don't solo queue. Uh, don't like the idea of base classes. The adapter is too overcomplicated. Yeah, it it's that, that fine line between like duplication and wanting to extract the code. <laughs> The thing is, with adapters, you're always going to have to inflate it somehow and and bind it. So, I mean, I would say this kind of stuff is fine tentatively. Maybe I would extract the glide stuff if possible. But definitely prefer this over like a base adapter and 12 generics all over the place. But again, preference things and comes down to what you prefer. In our... Feels bad, man. Same for you in Valorant. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, solo queue is not fun. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, at... At, at work, um... I don't want to speak badly of people, you know, but it's a conflict of of opinions. I've worked with people who who love their solid principles, which is good, don't get me wrong. But then it just ends up going overboard. Um, and you open some classes and there's just generics galore. Um, like sometimes you open a class, a view model or something, and there's a field in there and because of generics and you know programming against interfaces which have generics on them oh Priestella, thank you <laughs> thanks man appreciate it even though i don't think you are a developer right but appreciate the support uh yeah so you open up these files and there's a field that's you know takes up one line but it goes all the way across the screen <laughs> just because of all the generics involved and to try and find what the implementation is of that thing where does it come from oh man I think I've spent like at one point half an hour trying to find where an on click listener was set not even exaggerating because so much inheritance generics all over the place interfaces you just have a hard time finding what's actually concrete. Oh! Okay, I need to chill a bit. And admittedly, I've gone through that phase of making base classes for stuff and generics, and then over time you learn that it can actually not be too great. <laughs> uh... Must always gossip about colleagues. Yeah, I, I do. I tend to do it, but obviously not, not starting a witch hunt or uh, mentioning names and things. It's it's a learning experience. That's what I'm trying to say. You can see how people do stuff. You can think for yourself. Oh, that's actually really cool. Or, what the fuck's going on? Sorry for the language, but <laughs> sometimes that is what happens. It's it's like. You look at code and it's like, wow, what is, what is any of that? Why is any of that? <laughs> oh boy. Much waste of time, exactly. If I have to spend a half an hour looking for a click listener, something is not so good. Especially uh, with like dependency injection frameworks. Specifically, we use Dagger and Hilt at work, and you can 
you can bind an implementation to an interface, right? So then you can inject the interface in places, but if that interface end up, ends up having generics, it's really tricky to find out where the implementation is coming from. <laughs> what is life exactly? Did I... Or how did I end up here and... How did I end up with all these generics, man? <laughs> anyway, that's... Yeah, I always end up ranting about that kind of stuff. But no, actually, I think this, this project was done really well. Apart from the few little issues that, that we saw, but... I mean, we've seen some projects that have multi-modules. We have, I don't know, your domain layer in a module, your service layer in a module. Uh, I don't know, database repos in a separate module and that's kind of a bit insane for me and uh, don't get me started on the use case <laughs> the use case it things all over the place man but again if you guys do that stuff don't i'm not i'm not hating it's, everything has its place so keep on doing that if if you are using use cases in that pattern Everything can work. Everything has its place and you should use it when it's applicable. <clears throat> Sorry. We have a similar case. Everything is a singleton. Oh no. Exactly. Oh wait, I missed... I missed your previous one, sorry. We have a helper util class for each component. Yeah. Uh, and singletons also try to avoid them where you can. Especially if they are actually storing state and things. As you say, it leads to a lot of Atomicity? Uh, synchronization problems. Indeed, we've had a lot of that kind of stuff. Because we have... <laughs> oh, jeez. I don't know what's wrong with me. We have singletons that we use to cache data. Right, like caching service responses in memory. But... When the user signs out, we need to clear those caches. So it's like a singleton, but not really. It's like singleton to the session. Because uh, being a banking app, we don't store stuff on disk. So you store it in memory until the user signs out and, and everything must be cleared. So implementing that wrong means, you know, the data is not cleared. And then you sign in with someone else, they'll see the previous person's data. It's a keyboard. A keyboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as I said, everything has its place and everything has its use case, so don't think like <laughs> when I say singletons are bad, don't try to avoid them completely because you need to use them when they make sense. And same how I was saying, uh, I don't understand the, the use case class or the use case pattern. I forget what the official name is of that, but I've seen where people have a, a use case implementation uh, sitting between view model and repo layer. I just don't get that personally. But there will be cases where it's valid, and that's fine, and you can use it there. But don't... <laughs> it might, again, be necessary... It, it, it might not be necessary to have a use case class, and then you should not go and add it everywhere just because it's a, it's a thing, it's a pattern. 
this always turns into a ranting stream, and I feel bad. But the, the message at the end of the day is use stuff when it's appropriate. <laughs> uh, like Gboard, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. And singletons, I guess. Single tunes. Exactly, uh... That's also what people don't really get as well, right? Storing singletons is taking up memory. Uh, it can make app slower, it can make it run out of memory on low-end devices. So something to keep in mind as well. Only use singletons when, when necessary. <sighs> but anyway, I think I'm pretty much done for today. <laughs> Oh boy, feels bad always, always yelling. Well, not really, it's trying to spread the knowledge, I guess. I don't know. Trying to take from my almost seven years of experience and trying to share what I've learned and hopefully make life a bit easier, but uh, yeah, hopefully this yeah, this was this was useful. It's a bit of a different review this time, not a weather app. So, <laughs> looking at at cats, it's always good. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um. I mean, jeez. I am also still open to learning, of course, as we all should be. I'm not saying my way is the right way. Just giving opinions. Um, thanks, Cybershark. So, thanks, Aditya. You need to learn. No, you don't need to. You just should be willing to learn, I guess. It's not like you should feel that you don't know anything. Of course not. Just be willing to see opinions of, of other people. So, Daniel, you asked... When is, is Hilt Activity Scope used? <laughs> I have not really used it myself, I think. It's... If anyone has a use case, please, please do mention it, but... It's it's a tricky one. Scoping in 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 Hilt and Dagger is very very niche in my opinion. The one I use mainly is uh, Singleton, of course. But otherwise, scoping stuff to activity or fragment is not really necessary. Um, because it just means that every time you try to inject it, you'll get the same thing back for that one activity. So I guess it could be useful if you have a class that, for some reason, depends on an activity instance. But that's not really scoping though, that's just installing it into activity components. Alright, everything into the singleton. Yeah, agreed. I have not really done scoping myself, because it's just... I've not needed to, that's all, that's all, and in the docs they say avoid, not really avoid, but only scope when it's necessary because it has effect on runtime and and the generated code size, so yeah, don't make everything activity scope just because you can, and it's just it's going to make the code a bit slower. Uh, sorry, uh... Yuba, how many years? I've been working since January 2015 as native Android developer. I've learned a lot over the years. <laughs> I have been working at a bank for most of the time, so... You know, in that environment you get exposed to a lot of different people, which is good. 
because I joined straight after university knowing nothing, so it was a great opportunity to learn. You see all the different people, different opinions, and you sort of go from there. Um, I feel you learn a lot more in watching streams. Okay, that's cool. Passive learning. I guess that, that is a, a decent approach. Uh, you had to maintain an extra player instance. Yeah, so that's kind of the the situation, I guess, where you have an object like an exo player, which is is tied to a specific activity instance. Then you can scope it to the activity. So whenever you happen to request it from Dagger, it will send you back the same thing. And then you can, I don't know, destroy it or whatever afterwards. Right, that sound was my my monitor scraping along the ground or the table. Uh. No, oh, that's cool. Uh, Alright. Well, I think... I'm done. 7pm. Gonna make some dinner. And, yeah, thanks everyone for visiting. Appreciate it as always. Uh, I don't know when I'll be back. <laughs> the reviews coming in admittedly have been very slow for some reason. Not really sure why. Maybe people aren't looking for work anymore. <laughs> no, wouldn't that be the day? Wouldn't that be... Be great when people don't need work anymore. Uh, yes, anywho. Sorry, rambling a bit. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for stopping by. Cybershark, Uber, Aditya, Daniel. Who else? There were a few others as well. But anyway, thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one, whenever that will be. I might actually try to do the some more on the weather app. The one that I've been working on this weekend, so we'll see. See if I'm in the mood. <laughs> um, otherwise, thanks everyone. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. And we'll see you... Yeah, see you next time. Cheerio.